Welcome. For this brief video, we are going to look at taking an image from the internet, bringing it into Autodesk Inventor, tracing that image so we can bring it into LaserCAD as a shape. For instance, I have LaserCAD open right now, and we are going to import a pig that has been traced. So we can now take the original shape that we would have had from a picture and bring that in as a 2D shape. We've done some other work with this drawing, but that's what we're going to be working on. So we have Inventor open. We're going to go ahead and start a new IPT, standard.ipt. And we're going to work on a new sketch once this opens on any work plane. And we want to bring in a picture here, image. So if we go to Google and we type in pig clip art, let's say for an example on images, we have a nice clean PNG file here. So we're going to save as and save it to our drive into a folder that we can find it. So now in our drive we have saved pig2. So now we're going to go back to inventor and we're going to do image And we're going to go to that file and bring in PEG2. I can dimension the size of this PEG to be however big or small I want, which is going to be important because typically once we start tracing stuff, it becomes extremely hard to resize it. So you want to make sure you get the PEG to the right size to start with. So I'm just going to draw a square here. For reference, let's say I want the pig to be <clears throat> about 4 by 6, somewhere in that range. Maybe you want it bigger, maybe you want it smaller, uh, but right now that would be the right size. But let's say we wanted it bigger. Let's go 8 by 5, I don't know, something like that. So we've got some space we can make this pig bigger. So we're going to dimension the actual picture to be bigger, 5.25, and I can drag the picture around so I can still go bigger if I want it to fill that box. So I've got the size of the box being what I want the pig to be, and now I'm just trying to get the pig to fill it. That right there looks pretty good. So I've got a box of eight by five and I've dimensioned my picture to pretty much fill that box. I don't need the box. <clears throat> the box is just there for reference. My dimension of the picture is now the right size. So now I can start drawing the pig out. I'm always going to save as I go. I think that's always important. So save. And I'm gonna work on that sketch again. And now I'm gonna start drawing around it. To do that, I'm going to use the spline tool. And I'm sure there's other ways that we can use to draw what we're trying to do. But the spline tool is going to work pretty good. So for spline, got that selected. I'm going to zoom in on just the ear area. 
And each set of lines that kind of is curved is gonna be one chunk and where it has a drastic change, I'm gonna make it a new line. So right here is a drastic change. So I'm gonna click. And if I start doing this with spline, you can see it kind of just makes its own shape. Until I hit go and it creates that line type. So I'm just gonna do that by following the ear around. So I'm gonna, the more you click, the more accurate it gets. And this tool definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm going to click more on the small curves and less on the big curves. And I'm going to call that done by hitting the check mark. There's my first spline. I'm going to do it again to get to this chunk right here. I always want to make sure I grab the endpoint <clears throat> when I do that. And I'm going to now work up here. I can bounce around however I want to get all the lines on here. Check mark. But as you can see, I'm doing it in uh, separate lines. The more lines I get, the more it wants to snap to certain areas. It gets to be a little bit of a pain. But as long as you have some patience and you save often, it will work just fine. You'll notice that the check mark kind of keeps getting in the way. So if that's happening, you can just move it around. And we start to pull that together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work myself down towards the leg here. Right now I'm just concentrating on the lines that are going to be the outside shape of the piggy. <clears throat> so I'm just kind of following this around. I can go in both directions as you can see. It will drop down. Oh, there it ended on me for some reason. So we'll just continue there. Yep. Come over here and work our way to the tail. Doesn't have to be perfect here, whether I'm directly on the black lines of the pig or not. I'm drawing my own. And I'm gonna stop it right there. And I'll just keep tracing around this thing as we go. For right now, I'm just going to close it off. Finish and extrude that shape. Doesn't really matter how far. I'm going to go 0.1. And as you can see, we start to get the shape of the piggy coming together. Eventually, you're going to take your final shape, right click, export face as a DXF file, and that's what we get when we bring in this. You can see that I had done that much of the pig so far. As I brought it in. I did go through the actual inventor file and put some holes in for our triangle. I put some eyes and nose in so it actually looks like a piggy and I did some work on the tail to try to get that to show up as well. When you do bring your DXF into LaserCAD it is common once in a while for it to be missing a piece for whatever reason and all you have to do is come in here and kind of close it off. The laser is still going to cut it out. Yes, it's separate lines, but as long as it closes off, the laser will cut that out for us in the end. So now we have that ready to go. In this type of a file, you probably would make the nose and eyes a different color because you're going to be doing them in a different fashion or a different order uh, from everything else. And you might have some font in this file as well. So 
So hopefully in this short video, you were able to find some sort of a PNG, JPEG, BMP type of file, clip art, that you can bring in and do some tracing on. Once you get that file into Inventor, you are then going to size it to be the correct size, because it's really hard to size it afterwards. And then you're going to use the spline tool to come all the way around it. And if you want to get this interior detail, you can make extra circles and stuff and do extrusions afterwards in order to bring that more detail in and put your holes in for your triangle and whatnot. Good luck.